take a moment just to sit quietly and in the hush, wait. Wait, daring to make room, to sense the one who is already with you, the one who has already drawn close. And in the quiet, know the peace that comes from God. Be assured you are held now and always in God's arms. Just know that God cares. Welcome to Sunday from Dornach. We are meeting in person for those who are able to get here, and it is good to gather, even if it is very, very different. But what's even better still is knowing that we're one in Christ wherever and however we're tuning in, whether it's via the phone line or on the web or in person. We are family. Lord Jesus, with us in our homes, in church, here in the highlands or wherever in the world. It's when we stop to sit with you that it dawns on us that you as Lord of all notice us, care for us and love us beyond our imagining. In response, we shiver at the shallowness of the love we offer you and we realise how weak is our commitment to you and yet knowing all that you you continue not only to sit with us but to stand by us and walk with us and carry us help us we pray to put our hand in yours allowing you to lead us in your ways so may we find the fullness of life that you promise. These things we ask in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. We turn now to hear from the pages of the Bible. Today we're going to hear about an incident where Jesus was challenged and we will hear too Jesus' response to that challenge. St Matthew tells a story. Listen to what happened. The Pharisees went off and made a plan to trap Jesus with questions. They sent him some of their disciples and some members of Herod's party. Teacher, they said, we know that you tell the truth. You teach the truth about God's will for people without worrying about what others think because you pay no attention to anyone's status. Tell us then, what do you think? 
Is it against our law to pay taxes to the Roman Emperor or not? Jesus, however, was aware of their evil plan. And so he said, you hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin for paying the tax. They brought him the coin and he asked them, whose face and name are these? The emperors, they answered. So Jesus said to them, well then, pay to the emperor what belongs to the emperor and pay to God what belongs to God. When they heard this, they were amazed and they left him and went away. ever experience times when you have the absolutely perfect answer for someone, only that perfect answer comes to you in the middle of the night, long, long, long after the conversation has ended. And all you can do is wish that you had thought of it sooner. Jesus come back to the question that had been carefully thought up to try to catch him out, Jesus' comeback was the perfect answer at the perfect time. But why the question at all? It seems that Jesus was making some of the leadership in the temple feel distinctly uncomfortable. And so they wanted to see him reined in and put in his place. So they decided to fire a shot across Jesus' bows, publicly, in the hope that he would then say something that would either turn the crowds against him, or they hoped that Jesus would say something that they, the authorities, might be able to get their teeth into and use to brand him a blasphemer or a liar, or perhaps even both. What you just heard John reading saw the faith leaders teaming up with a very unlikely bunch of people. That leadership, generally against the Roman rule and occupation because it robbed them of any real power in their own land. That leadership, here they are teaming up with some Herodians people known for their willingness to work hand in hand with the Romans. As I say, two very unlikely bedfellows. So why the coalition? Well, because it was in the interest of both groups to try to stop Jesus rocking the boat. Rocking the boat from both a faith perspective and from a political perspective. So the two groups, usually in opposition, came together to pose a question to Jesus that whichever way it was answered, they hoped would lead to the most glorious backlash against Jesus. And then they would be rid of the man from Nazareth forever. But they didn't want to make what they were about too obvious. 
So the leadership themselves, they weren't the ones to make the approach to Jesus. He would have smelled a rat as soon as he set eyes upon them if they had approached him. Instead, they sent along some of their disciples. And those disciples mingled with all the others who were listening to Jesus teach and who were asking him questions. They bided their time. And then, then they played the flattery card. We know you are a man of integrity, they said. We know that you're a man of truth. We know that you are not swayed by what other people think. We know that you teach the truth. So can we ask you a question, Jesus? Is it right for us to pay taxes to Caesar? And Jesus knew straight away what their game was, and he told them that he knew. If he said, as many of the people standing with him might have been tempted to, if he said, why should they pay taxes to a foreign ruler? The Herodians would be after him. If he said, yes, we should pay those taxes, then all the people who were standing waiting for him to speak, threatened by the Roman rulers, these people would lose their faith in him and they would turn away from him. Jesus asked for a Roman coin. Now that's an important detail. And it's important from the perspective that Jesus didn't himself have such a coin. But those who had asked the question quickly produced one, giving away perhaps that they were actually in cahoots with the Romans, even as Israelites. Jesus took it took the coin, and he turned it in his hand. The emperor's face was on one side, and the claim that he, the emperor, was God was on the other side. Staring at the coin, Jesus fired a question back at his questioners. Okay, so whose name and face are on the coin, he asked. And Jesus is told, it is the emperor's. And then taking careful aim, Jesus' response hits the bull's eye. Then he said, pay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. And everyone was amazed. Amazed at what though? Well, the fact is that Jesus has not just cleverly sidestepped a difficult question, he's actually answered that question and answered it absolutely brilliantly. Those who were doing the asking seemed to suggest that the issue was a simple one, a simple political one, purely about paying or not paying taxes. Jesus, in his response, however, not so gently reminds people that in the midst of the political, there is a bigger moral and theological dilemma. Are earthly powers the only ones we need to be answerable to? Or does ultimate authority lie with God? If God is the ultimate power, then do we not owe God something too? Loyalty and faithfulness to who God is and to what God wants is what we ought to give him. And does God's authority, Jesus is suggesting, does God's authority not trump any other sort? Now, there are those who, when they have read this story, have quickly jumped to the conclusion that what the story is about is showing that Jesus is not interested in political matters, and so neither should we be. But that is not what Jesus is saying. It is true 
that he was never interested in party politics. But Jesus was absolutely passionate about pursuing a peaceful and a just world for all who inhabit it. That is why he was so vociferous when it came to the plight of the poorest and of widows and of women and of children. Jesus never gave up trying to defend those he saw as being in the bottom of the pile. And later on in his story, we will very definitely see and hear Jesus taking a stand against the kind of taxes that exploited people. That was when, if you remember, Jesus went on the rampage through the temple, turning over the tables of the moneylenders as he went. Giving to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, Jesus is saying, has to be seen in the far bigger and the far wider context of giving to God what belongs to God. And that bigger picture stuff means that there should be times when we ask questions of those in power. It means that there should be times when we very def definitely need to speak out against the kinds of priorities that our society sets, because they're not priorities that match, it, that match God's. It means, too, that there should be times when we need to protest, to protest against what is unfair and unjust, because that is exactly what Jesus did. And it is also how we give to God what belongs to God. That is his world and his people and the vision and the plans that God has for that world and for his peoples. This is not about getting a, not getting our hands dirty. It's about rolling up our sleeves and getting stuck in where God wants us to get stuck in. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Give to God what belongs to God. In the name of Christ. Amen. Christ is the world in which we move. Christ are the folk we summon to love. Christ is the voice which calls us to care. And Christ is the one who meets us here. To the lost Christ shows his face. To the unloved he gives his embrace. To those who cry in pain or disgrace. Christ makes with his friends a touching place. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, give us the courage to follow your example. Give us the courage to dare to stand up and speak out for those who are pushed aside, as well as for those treated as if they are worthless. Help us not to be content to see others struggling without being willing to stand with them and by them. We pray especially for those falling into greater debt because of COVID-19. We pray for those awake at night worrying about bills and food and work. Help us to care enough to want to ensure that those in need get the help they need. Lord Jesus, we pray that our world might give to God what belongs to God and recognise the gift that all people are, and the gift too that this planet is. Help us to treat everyone as your child, no matter where in the world they are from, no matter what their accent or culture or colour. And help us too to see in nature something of you and of your love for us. 
May we cherish each other and this world, and may we do so giving thanks to the Creator who gives all their life, while celebrating the loving imagination that refuses to let us go. Lord Jesus, we pray for the peace you promise to fill and filter through individuals, communities and nations, to flood the earth so that warring and violence cease, so that troubled minds are quieted and those feeling lost or alone, hurt or humiliated, may know their worth and their place in your heart. And may that peace work to see the poorest enriched, the downtrodden lifted high, the sick healed and the suffering set free. These prayers are in your name, Lord Jesus, giving to God what belongs to God. To God's glory. Amen. Go now in peace to share peace with a world that desperately needs it. Go to reach out in God's name and for God's sake. Go to stand up and speak out. Go to stick your head above the parapet and to do so in the name and for the sake of Jesus Christ. And may his blessing, the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and be with too all those whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen.